Now, if you really look at the tablet market, it's dominated by the iPad. Now, if you look at new users, artists, designers, they're getting the new iPad Pro due to its capability to replace a laptop. Well, somewhat, as promised by Apple. And then, of course, the Apple Pencil. As a designer myself, I always wanted the iPad Pro, but I was really, really skeptical because of its operating system. Well, the old OS. The new 13, however, is a different story altogether. So what did I do? I got my hands on the biggest available iPad there is. So this is my take on the new iPad OS. Let's get it started iOS 13 was a major update to all the iOS users and it came with a ton of new features and most importantly the iPad users had a different version of the OS as an update and now we have a dedicated operating system for the iPad Air 2 and above. It's called the iPad OS. The scale of changes in the iPad OS seems to signify a new beginning with a bunch of new features. And after using the iPad OS for a week, the name difference does make sense. So here are the top new features and changes on the iPad OS that I have learned so far. So number one is the dark mode. As we all know about the dark mode that comes with the iOS 13 on the iPhones and on the iPad OS. You can turn this on from the display settings or from the control center. I really enjoyed using this mode as it really helps when using the iPad in low light conditions. You can also set the dark mode manually or you can set it automatically. So what this does is when it's daytime, it's bright. When it's night, it's dark mode. It works across all the system apps seamlessly, even wide range of third party apps that are being updated for the dark mode. Now number two, for me one of the most important feature of the iPad OS is the extended display. Now I would probably not say it's a standalone feature of the iOS 13 because you also need macOS Catalina for this to work seamlessly. So what you can do with extended display is you can use your iPad as a wireless or wired display for your Mac if you have the latest macOS Catalina update. This sidecar feature has endless possibilities. First being the secondary display and second you can use your iPad as a drawing tablet for your Mac. Now number three we have the control center. On the control center you can now press and hold the toggles of the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to quickly bring up the list of available networks or paired devices. It makes it really easy to switch between the networks and change connected wireless devices. Now I do know that Apple is really late on this feature but better late than never. Number four on my list is today's view. Well, this feature is known as this is the first change you will notice after the update. When in landscape mode, you have your today's page on the side of your front page. You can pin your favorite widgets to get a glance at your updates from different apps, battery status, music controls and shortcuts. Number five, resize your keyboard. Now you can resize your keyboard according to your preference. You can simply pinch in the keyboard and resize it the way you want. Also, this can be positioned anywhere in the screen and is really handy. Now number six, it's not a new feature, but it's an update to an old app and it's gotten really handy. The Files app. From the outside, the Files app may look the same, but now has a tons of new features. First and foremost, the most important is that you can now plug in an external device and storages to access from them. You can also connect to the shared server and gain access to all the files shared at your server. Furthermore, you can also zip and unzip files from within the Files app and you get a detailed metadata of your file like on the Mac OS. Now on number 7, we have a completely revamped Photos app with amazing editing tools. The new Photos app on the iPad OS and the new iOS has some great tools to edit photos. You get a detailed controls on editing various settings on the site such as brightness, brilliance, exposure and so on. And to adjust any of these options, you can move the lines of the bars just below each button to the left or right. The same goes with filters as well. Similarly, you can now also edit videos. It's no longer just trimming and basic adjustments. Now you can adjust everything like on photos, like brightness, exposure, and also apply a filter to your video. And also cropping and changing perspective as well. 
With good video editing tools now included on your Photos app, you are no longer forced to find a more complicated video editing app. Now on number 8, PlayStation 4 and Xbox controller pairing. Another great new feature is the PS4 and Xbox One controller support. Now Apple has got a really bad history on gaming, but this integration certainly makes gaming on a bigger iPad really fun. Especially with that 120Hz display on the iPad Pro, I played the Asphalt 9 and it was just like that on the console, lag free and responsive. I really can't wait until further games are supported for the controllers as well as Apple Arcade. Now on number 9, external keyboard and mouse support. Now this one's really short, you can connect your wireless keyboard and mouse to your iPad and that my friend is awesome. Now next up we have multitasking enhancements, Safari tab multitasking. There are tons of new multitasking features on the iPad OS. You can now split view the same app across both halves of the screen, like two tabs in Safari, notes and so on. There are endless things you can do with these new features. You can also multitask and split view and move the apps anywhere on the screen, play multiple videos on YouTube and so much more. Now next up we've got scroll screenshots. I know, I know this feature was there on the Samsung devices already, but this too is a worthy feature to say as now you can take full page screenshots of the websites, emails and so on. As soon as you take a screenshot, a full page option will show up if the content has scrollable contents. Then if you tap on it, you get the whole pages as a screenshot that can be saved as a PDF. Now next up, we have Safari improvements. Even Safari now comes with new features. Now the web pages are in full desktop versions unlike mobile versions of the web pages like before. And like the desktop version of the website, you can also download contents from the web pages which can be accessed on the download section of the files app. Now next up, we have shortcuts. After the update, you may have come across the app called Shortcuts. Now this is a great way to add automations on your favorite tasks, get suggested shortcuts for your favorite apps and many more. Like you can set multiple alarms and trigger it by saying a simple command. Have the Siri start a video recording and many many more. It even supports third party apps and once you get used to using this feature you can add many shortcuts with multiple commands. Now next up another awesome feature, sharing your audio. Now you can share your audio output on multiple AirPods or output devices with the Apple W1 chip. Just tap on the output icon on the music app on the control center and tap on share audio. Now the list of supported devices will show up here and you can select devices to output the audio. So that was it for this video guys, we will be back with more amazing contents really soon. Until then, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get all the notifications first.